Crossroads Media. Wow! It's actually the week of opening day. Congratulations, everybody. We finally made it here. And unfortunately, it doesn't come without any negative news. Because on Saturday night, I put together a game plan and I put together a show sheet, show prep for a four, or no, excuse me, a three-hour show Saturday night. And I was going to talk about Tortorella. And I was going to talk about what was happening with some of these other coaches in the city. Until on my drive-in, I had to essentially throw everything out the window because Taiwan Walker was going to get an MRI and he probably wasn't going to start the season on time. And that's exactly what we heard. And while your initial reaction might be, so what, he sucks anyway, he did eat over 170 innings last season. And for whatever reason, they were able to win games when he was on the mound. Now, I don't think he particularly pitched well to have all of those wins. Obviously, the numbers speak for itself, but it was really just about that first inning. He was sniffing over a 7 ERA in the first, and then he's able to slow the game down and get more comfortable from there. So if there was just a possibility of smoothing out the start of his games, then maybe we're in a whole different world for the Taiwan Walker experience, and that still stands true today. It just won't happen at the start of the season, but my point of bringing it up is you have to replace 170-plus innings. I mean, that's very important. Here's where I have a little bit of an issue with the front office, and I was saying this prior to the news that he had a shoulder injury. Even when healthy, with Taiwan Walker available for you, you figured it would be a great idea to speak with Yamamoto to the point where you had more money on the table than the Dodgers. And oh, by the way, you had Bryce Harper sit down and create some sort of package where he's involved in the package. So you were clearly understanding that you could improve your starting pitching and you weren't as satisfied as you were saying publicly, you were still on the prowl. So knowing that you were still on the prowl when healthy, what do you think about your squad now? And if you actually want to take down the Braves for the NL East and win the damn division over the long haul. I'm not talking short series. I'm not talking Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola in the playoff. That's a different monster. But if you're going to catch up 13 games, 14 games, and beat the Braves over the long haul, you definitely do need a fifth starter, and it needs to be more than a bullpen game or a Spencer Turnbull. I don't know. The point of bringing up they were clearly interested in Yamamoto is go get Jordan Montgomery. If you want to be serious about this, if you actually want to support your claim that you want to win the National League East, then you have to improve your starting rotation. And now, guess what? There's a lot of competition. There's a lot of people that are going through their experiences of injuries. So they're going to try and get something going. There are some reports out there that now some longer-term contracts are in play. Multiple teams are picking up the phone and checking in to some degree there are some interests and the Phillies is a team that is part of that equation that doesn't surprise me whatsoever but go do it go get Jordan Montgomery it's that simple go open up your checkbook even more John Middleton he claims he wants his damn trophy back and he'll be doing anything and he's very willing to do it well then now is the time to make your actions actually speak even louder than they already have and he's for sure definitely paying a lot of guys and willing to fat, fat pay, check it up. But let's go with Jordan Montgomery, something that can get him here and in a rotation that is right on the money. Could you imagine? Imagine having to face Zach Wheeler, Aaron Nola, and Jordan Montgomery. And then, by the way, Ranger Suarez. And there's your top four pitchers. That absolutely puts you in the category as one of the best starting pitchers, uh, the starting pitching rotations in all of baseball. I mean, I thought that when they had Walker. Seriously, and not because of Walker, but I'm just saying, having Wheeler, Nola, Ranger, Walker, Sanchez, when you look at a core five and you compare that to the rest of the league, that's 
absolutely up there whether you want to admit it or not, but it is the truth. And if you had a Montgomery, I mean, come on now, fellas. That's exactly what you need to do if you're assessing how to get better, how to improve, and how to make this the best team possible to put the best roster on the field. All right, let's get to the big debate of what was my Saturday radio show, and it kind of happened organically. I believe a caller just called in talking about the division. Now, let me be very clear here. For many, many years of my life, after the Chase Utley, Ryan Howard years, after the fun, it became one of the worst baseball times of my life. Each year, we were hoping that they'd be able to break the streak of this not getting into the playoff lifestyle. We are finally in a position now. Well, making the playoffs isn't obvious. They are making the playoffs. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. They are making the playoffs. They should be making a serious deep run. No questions asked. The reason I bring this up is we have all week to anticipate opening day. Would you rather play in the wild card so you can have mojo or win the division and have a bye. The amount of people that called in and said they prefer the wild card made me go nuts, bananas. I was lost for words. I had to reset during the break. And my producer, Danny Ryan, who I love to death, he does an amazing job. He raises his hand in the producer studio. I think, all right, he wants to get his opinion in there and back me up because everybody with a brain understands that you take the division so you get a bye. You could set up your rotation. It's not automatic. You win that three-game series. And he raises his hand because he was just acknowledging that, yeah, I'm on that side. I prefer the wild card. How? How? How can you prefer the wild card? What does JT Real Muto do nonstop after every playoff win? He counts down the topper. Hey, topper, six more. Hey, topper, five more. Hey, topper, four more. What's he doing? He's counting down. I'm chopping off two wins of the countdown without even having to play. Right then and there, it's a no-brainer. Done, done, conversation, done. Don't even need any more. But for some reason, we live in la-la land where, oh, but we have such streaky hitters. Everybody's a streaky hitter. And the few days off, well, guys are really messing up their timing. Stop. It's an excuse. The Houston Astros had no trouble doing it. They beat us in the World Series. Why? Because your Don Alvarez against Jose Alvarado was miserable for us. I mean... Jordan Alvarez had time off. What was he able to do against Jose Alvarado? Okay, yeah, okay, let's not relive that. They're pitching at a no-hitter in the World Series, but they didn't play the wild card series. And this whole momentum thing, when they played the St. Louis Cardinals, that was the Cardinals having one of the most historic collapses out of their bullpen ever. Alec Bohm gets drilled. There was a dinky little bleeder by Gene Segura on the right side of the diamond. And there's plenty of ways, too, where this, hey, we've really got to see live pitching. There's ways to simulate this stuff, by the way. They're not just sitting on their ass for three or four days not doing anything. They're preparing themselves, and there are ways to do it. And this also went right into the discussion of, okay, well, what would be uh, solid is, Let's say it goes three games, and then you have to use someone else other than Zach Wheeler in game one of a series in the NLDS. I had callers say they preferred a world where Zach Wheeler got the pitch in the wild card, wasn't ready for game one, so then we can set Zach Wheeler up against their second pitcher game two and put you at advantage with Aaron Nola in game three because obviously they're going to rest their starters and have everyone rolling from one through three for games one through three, whoever your opponent is, right? I fucking hate that. Hey, you know what that is? That's soft. That's baby crap is what it is. Why not try and win game one? Let's use the Yankees as an example with the healthy Garrett Cole. I want Wheeler facing Garrett Cole in game one. I, like, Isn't that what you want as a competitor, as an athlete? You're just 
punting game one? And it's like, well, no, because Ranger Suarez can outduel Garrett Cole. Yeah, I think Ranger Suarez can hold his own against a lot of great pitchers for sure. But what if you could beat Garrett Cole? Imagine taking down the Yankees with Garrett Cole game one. Think about the energy you had for game two. You just took down their top horse. Think about taking their, their, their testicles and squeezing it and twisting it, ripping their balls off and, and cutting the head off the snake.